Hi, I am Raj Malhotra. And I'm Ben Bergreen. Welcome to Destin, Florida for the Florida Mentoring Program, exclusively for U.S. and Canadian students. And it's uh, exciting for me. It's my first time uh, doing the vacation program. We also have the scholarship winners that are here. So it's going to be a great 10 days. In addition to the scholarship winners, we also have a very special guest that the students don't even know about. So we're very excited to have him join us later in the week. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we need, uh, you know, we need to make sure we can feed everybody. So we got the necessities. <laughs> yeah, they're touching down now and they're going to come rolling in here in the next few hours. And uh, we'll just take this day just to kind of get familiarized with everybody. Uh, and then we'll start the actual program tomorrow. Yeah. Hello. Howdy. I'm Ben. How's it going? Ian. Yeah, welcome, Ben. Hi. Ben, how are you? Yeah, we're so excited. Yeah, been looking, looking forward, forward to this for a while. Yeah, really, all right. So do you guys trade uh, now, personally, or? Fresh newbies, yeah. Learn, learn it first before you lose money. <laughs> Gonna kill me. I can't send her no pictures or anything like that. She's gonna be jealous. That's <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'll be there 24/7. Good buddy, good to see you. What a way to live. I think they're selling well. I think they're getting to know each other. They're having a nice conversation here in the living room, having some bourbon together. They can't break bread, you have to break bourbon. Excited. Yeah. You're Eager. Ready to go. Are you just where everybody starts piling on, piling on, piling on, piling on? So I'm gonna go and grab some food um, and uh, get to know each other a little bit. like a kid in a candy store right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it takes some time to get used to this off. It's going to be an interesting time, I think. <laughs> we're at the Henderson Hotel. We're at the Primrose Restaurant for our opening dinner. We've got the private wine cellar, and we're looking forward to a great meal. I think the guys are getting on pretty well. Like uh, we have guys that are from 21 to much older, and they're really um, they're really bonding. They've had a nice conversation in the living room, and they're looking to uh, really work together. It's good for your training, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just right, right? Yeah, I think they're having a nice conversation with Ben. Ben's been talking to them about his past. He's more of a futures trader and trading some live commodities that they're not really familiar with. So it's quite a great contrast to my background. Uh, and I was really uh, attracted to was that it was all professionals like myself who was doing this stuff. All right, guys, I want to welcome you, welcome you to the opening dinner. Um, this is the first dinner of our 10 day mentoring program. And I'm really looking forward to uh, for me and Ben both to teach you guys uh, what we know. Guys, cheers. And welcome. <laughs> so today is Friday, the first full day of classroom work. Today we will be going through both good and bad habits of retail and institute traders, as well as um, idea gener long idea generation. So at the end of today, our students will be able to pitch one or two good long ideas for our next classroom session on Monday. Should be a good one. All right, good morning everyone. I'm just gonna start with an overall layout of um, you know why it's good to have the rules we have and the process we use mm -hmm. and how that can give you an edge and uh, then we'll start digging into a little more details uh, as the day goes on. We, we didn't advertise it because we didn't know if we was able to make it but he will he should be able to be here for Thursday and Friday, so especially for some of you guys that are looking to maybe transition the industry, he can give you some advice. He's uh, 
It's very well respected, so we're looking forward to having him here. Everyone's looking forward to it. It's easy to learn. It's easy to get rid of bad habits once you know what they are. And these are probably half the questions. There's probably twice as many questions you should be asking yourself. But these are a, a sample of the questions you should always be asking yourself anytime you invest in something. I think all of them have went through the PTM, so they're all at relatively the same level, and they're all getting uh, a bit better. I can see just from two hours that they're all getting better and much more knowledgeable in their questions and, and how to eliminate bad habits. Uh, I'm one of the three uh, winners of the scholarship contest uh, here in uh, Destin. Uh, won, uh, you know, a portion of the essay contest here, and so um, we're here to, to learn how to, to make money and, and turn ideas into hard dollars. Here, you know, especially when you can, you know, create a juxtaposition to the university. I mean, they have slides too, but the teachers are reading it there, and they ask a question, and nobody says anything, and then they just move on. And here, you know, it's the slides are really just a reference point, and we're really just talking back and forth. And, um, and if you don't know something and there is a question asked, it's not a move past it, well, here's the answer and you'll forget it in five minutes. It's well, somebody needs to say it because you need to learn it and it's important and that's why we're asking it. And so it's nice to get some interaction. It's, um, it's difficult to think that it gets better from here, but yeah, I'm happy. So the first one is kind of like a science and the second one, the qualitative is sort of like an art. If that makes sense. So trading is kind of like a scientific art. There's some science and some art to it. So what you want to do is come up with long, one long idea, at least as a group, one good long idea, and you will all present your long ideas to me on Monday, and I will tell you what I think of them. And I will show you actually how, what a good long idea, how to, how to find them, how, how to look it up online, and how to pitch a long idea. So let's go to... This is probably the best analysis I've seen in a while. And, and this this was done when, this was the first mentoring call after Thailand. And as you can see, it's, it's well thought out, the process, but more importantly, his qualitative analysis. He did all the qualitative analysis on top of that quantitative analysis to come in, to come up with a very good trade idea. And the stock is actually up 40 something percent since he Put this since you put this on it is very helpful to see the detail the the organization of everything that what you need to have to go through to per, 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 uh, present a proper example of everything is there if you're yeah. talking about beaches is it good beaches in south carolina myrtle beach yeah. uh they're they're drawing lines on charts <laughs> No. Do the qualitative stuff first and then, then look at the chart. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to give them a little intro uh, into your options. Just to, just the basics, just to uh, make sure that they know what we're talking about and they understand the terminology when we, you know, uh, discuss it. And uh, yeah, like that everybody's on board. And then we can get deeper into it next week. There has to be some type of catalyst for the thing to move. You know, so which is why buying options, because you have some like long term idea, especially like, you know, some value play. Well, you don't have time to wait, you know, unless you buy like leaps, which are like really far out expiration options. But you just don't have that time. Time is against you continuously. I lived in South Florida for a long time and uh, this was in the mid 90s and i used to fly actually cargo planes out in the caribbean so that was an interesting experience experience but it led me eventually to realize that that wasn't really what i wanted to do i was able to get a job with franklin templeton you know down there which is a you know 300 billion dollar fund and i uh, started at the bottom there and worked my way up to the trading desk and um you know that was about 20 years ago so here we are now the mentors, they all come from professional backgrounds, so they're not necessarily educators by them, you know, in, in, them, in themselves. They are professional traders, fund managers, and that's what we all have in common. Uh, and it's also been an eye-opening for me to see the interest that retail people have in this stuff. I was pretty blown away by that. Like, I didn't expect that at all, because I always dealt with people that are in my business where it's just the job and it's not a big deal but then you start hearing these you know how everybody is so hungry to learn this stuff from people who actually been there and done that 
uh, that is uh, something that was uh, really appealing to me. What you could do is you could sell uh, calls against it. So you'll collect a premium without taking the risk because you already hold the stock. Right? Yeah. So if it goes against you, then you're going to have to, you know, you already have the stock. So you're not, you're not, it's called being naked versus being covered. It's like a, looking at a big paint, blurry painting of colors. And the more, like, I hear from Ben and Raj that the more the camera kind of comes in focus. So, it's good stuff. We're gonna kill it, man. <laughs> I, I can see I can see the hamster wheel spinning right now amongst their heads, so it was a great success. Scratching the surface right now, but what we learned in uh, 15 minutes was more than I've learned in the last six months with what I've been playing around with options. And uh, an eye-opener, definitely. And you, you nailed it. So that I can... Well, I was just saying... I kind of taught myself that, and... He makes me feel like I'm at the best university ever. Have you aged the options party? them to Baytown Wharf. We're gonna do a uh, ropes course, uh, zip line, and beer. The qualitative part though is the best thing because that's what I was missing the whole time. Yeah, we bear from the teams. It'll be you guys that just came in Ben and then Tom. We're gonna go from like one end to the other. It's gonna be kind of like a extreme basketball it seems like. You know you get three tries and uh, best team wins. Does this team have a name? Winners. Hashtag winners. <laughs> Medallion. I do think too much at times, and the second I stopped thinking, I jumped off platform, and all of a sudden everything just came into focus. He like stepped up twice, you know, had to kind of recollect, and then he nailed it. He got two. <laughs> like, he nailed it. Like, that was great. You just gotta overcome your fear. have the Perseverance Award for Team Medallion, um, but Team Hashtag Winners won with 13 points to 6. Thank you for blessing me with that wisdom, no winners. <laughs> There's five flags for each team up there. I can, uh, I'll do the hardest one on our team. I'm going to Leading. Go! Ben's an animal. Yeah. Counting on Ben. Oh. 
lot of fun. I could do this like all day. then uh, you're more likely to just to shank the shot. You guys want to get it on the island, you score a point. All right? Four reads, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. nice. You feel me? <laughs> Anton's going to love that one. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, in the middle. In the middle. So it's in. Yeah, this is actually pretty tough. So. These two guys are the only real golfers of the group. Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, oh, that was nuts. Great. Um, oh! 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 That's a draw. That's a draw. Nice. This man played his heart out. <laughs> oh, great fun on the rope scores and the zip line adventure. Now we're having a real Louisiana style lunch because we are in the South. It's the redneck lunch. I love it. It really a, a teamwork event. So everyone, even though we're on two different teams, we're both, both teams are rooting for the other team to do well. So I really think we all bonded as, as a group. I know I am very Guys, cheers. Cheers. That's your job, you know, your trade. Uh, there's a lot of stress involved, and uh, you need to have a way to deal with it. So, if, so these people that are beginning to trading, and then that's all they do, you know, they're not going to last. You're gonna burn out. Yeah. Like a store market. Oh, no. Picking the outliers, the ones that do have the better earnings growth. Well, we've narrowed down the, uh, some of the sectors that we're, we feel comfortable looking at. So, th so when we go back to finish up on the homework, we're gonna start actually start looking at specific companies within those sectors. Uh, Thank you. Like, the, like the big institutions. Uh, they don't look. Most of them, they don't look at charts at all because they have much longer time frames, so they don't, don't really care. That doesn't mean that charge can't be valuable, but most of the big institutions, they don't, they don't look at that at all. They look at all the stuff that you guys are being taught here more. You know, there's advantages and disadvantages to being retail trading. You don't have to worry so much about moving market share, um, and you can just be a lot quicker and more nimble. When you're trading for a big fund, there's a whole strategy that goes into just getting trades done. You can't, you don't just go on exchange and buy half a billion shares of something. It's like it has to get done um, very in a stealthy way. You're like a market ninja. <laughs> Anything you hear from Ben or Raj is worth listening to. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> That's how I take it. Yeah, so anytime you get a chance to hear from guys that are, have been a part of the industry and really have um, solid experience and being successful in what we're trying to do, you gotta try and take it all in, you know? I was looking at that one. So I, I just got it.
So guys, as you know, we're in, concurrently we're also having a mentoring program in, in Thailand with um, Anton and one of my colleagues, Tristan. So we're gonna have a phone call actually with the people in the Thailand uh, mentoring program. So you're gonna get to speak with them right now and, um, <laughs> and meet them over Skype. It'll be pretty cool. Speaking of the devil. Hello? Hey guys. Hey. Hey, hey. hey, hey Anton. Anton. How's everyone getting up? <laughs> Everyone's good. Let me see if I can turn this to yeah. see uh, everyone. Uh, hello, boys. <laughs> so we've got the Thailand group Ooh. here as well behind us. Say yeah. hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a sunny day down in Florida. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty sunny. It's Awesome. How's, uh, how's our scholarship boys doing? Curtis, Trey, Teller? Yeah, great. We're doing good. good. And the veterans? <laughs> How are the veterans doing? Plotting along. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So uh, we just did our second session today. We did long ideas. Can't tell you what stocks we're looking at. Because uh, we'll end up with consensus trades on. <laughs> but uh, we've been looking at uh, a few themes. One really good theme that we're looking at right now is uh, commercial loan portfolios in trucks <laughs> first hundred days in turnaround states. Okay. So you might look at uh, loan books yeah. within the financial sector, commercial loan portfolios that have got big turnaround okay. potential. Later in the week, you guys have got a, a mystery man coming in and uh, he's going to be talking to all of you guys if you want to have a, a career in the industry and the best route for you guys to take cool. if cool. that's what you want to do and that's your objective. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. So guys, listen, I, uh, I wish I could be there with you, but obviously I'm busy in Thailand. <laughs> and, uh, I'm looking forward to all your trade ideas and can't wait to see the progress. So I just wanted to call in, say hello, and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, John. John. Thank you. All right, boys, have a good session, and hopefully we'll speak later in the week. Awesome. All right. Thank you. And I wish good luck to all the Thailand uh, mentees as well. Cool. All right. Yeah. Cheers. 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 So long. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was nice to see everybody on the other side. See how they're progressing, and uh, make some comparisons. All right, everyone. Welcome to day two of our classroom session. Today, what we will do, be doing is first we will be going through your long ideas, and after that, our, our second part of our class today, we will be going through short ideas. I, the process of generating good short ideas, and and finally, we'll be going through options again, and we'll, be, and we'll be continuing what we covered the other day. And with that, let's begin. EG2, 67.7. 67.7? Yeah. Oh, very consistent. <laughs> PE1. I guess my question is, how did you come up with 154.6? Because it's from a negative to a positive. What, what, what is oh, the actual E? There's a reason. Okay. You want to explain yeah. it? Sure. So again, this is this, this is a good point here because this is like you'll you'll, you'll encounter these numbers on a qualitative basis. This will look. Yeah. yeah. You have to you have to do some there fudge a, factor. There's adjustment. a reason yeah. for okay. it, and so we were concerned about that, um, and we almost threw it out just because it didn't quite. But through the qualitative, we understood why. It is a turnaround story. Yeah. So they're actually they they segment their business in two parts: um, flat roll product and uh, you know high or like high performance metals. Their flat roll product is the one that's been hurt by lower steel prices, lower, mm -hmm. lower, lower commodity prices. So that one, they've done a bunch of restructuring and non-recurring charges over the past two years. And so they're forecasting uh, March 2017 to be their first profitable growth okay. uh, for the pro profitable quarter. Did you break it down, like what's the earnings growth by just that sector itself? Oh, right. and so by, by, the, by that business itself? Um, like. I know, I know it's, it's not all it obvious. It was broken down. There. It should be in their yeah. annual report. Like, it was. We didn't I'm know sure. how much you would want to see of like each amount. Okay, I mean, it's, it's something you can revisit. I mean, but I, I would ask you to tell me that just okay. because it's kind of important. But, you know, you did most of the work. Uh, what, what are the risks? What business, what, what sector are they most exposed to? Aerospace? Yes. Okay. So what is your view on that? You did a good job to get to this point. So it clearly should go on your watch list and continue to investigate the story and watch the stock. But you guys did a good job of 
identifying a company, I think, and your analysis was very good. Anyone else have any comments about this idea, questions, what they think? Anyone say, I want to short this thing? <laughs> I like the, uh, like as, as you're discussing it, I'm learning mm -hmm. about the process and how you actually need to look at things, so mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Okay. Um, it's amazing though what you find in your company reports. It's all in there. It's a, it, it, it's it's what you should be reading because they're. I've never done that before in my life. Like I just. Would, I mean, who yeah. else? It's obvious, but it's what's amazing is people just don't, don't do that. that yeah. They don't look at what a company's saying about themselves, and then you ask yourself, once they say that about that, do I believe? I see. Him? If if you say, if you tell me stuff about Mike, some things maybe I won't believe. Like I'm a billionaire. <laughs> Give, okay, I hope so. No. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. It's a turnaround story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, very happy. You know, don't expect to to hit the home run out of the first park. You know, but I think we did really well with what we had, and I'm really proud of my team and the ideas they put forth. You know, it was it was nice to be able to to look at it from a whole, you know, a third party view, and see what they thought we didn't do right, you know, or what we might have missed out on. And so it was nice to have some, some feedback, you know, because normally you just have your kind of yourself. So. By making acquisitions, they seem very, very active in what's going on with litigation and policy, with environmental um, issues. Um, but are, are they growing? You keep telling me, like, are they growing because of acquisition? Or are they growing because of... They only growing? made two key acquisitions last year, so... I don't know if that's... Are they growing organically? I mean, is, is their earnings per share going higher because they bought other companies? Or is it because organic growth? Because that's a big difference. Like That's something I have to look a little deeper for. Okay. That's fair. I mean, that's why we're doing this. You're not supposed to have everything, get everything right today. Well, so what moves the stock, I guess? I mean, I, it seems like, I mean, they're priced in for, they've had a nice move. Again, repetition. You know, keep doing it. We're going to get better at it. We're going to have... A, better ideas and be able to work through them and look at the qualitative side a lot better one one of the groups did great their trade id is uh, ready for action and the other groups probably still need a little bit of work but i can see progress already yeah that's what i expect at this stage usually um the uh since it's their first time they need a, a little bit more of a, a systematic process and more importantly to understand the they struggle with the qualitative portions of the uh, analysis you know it's not enough just to check the boxes and, uh, <clears throat> and find a company that meets the criteria for what you're looking for we also need to dig deeper uh, into what's driving the fundamental growth of the companies and uh, you know what's what's likely to happen because it's not always that clear uh, as far as my role here uh, both uh, Raj and myself are both senior mentors He's more experienced when it comes to teaching this process than I am. So he's kind of taking lead on most of the classroom presentations. Um, you know, and I tend to talk to the guys more about what actually happens you know, on an institutional trading desk because a lot of these students are, interest, are here to actually um, be in industry and uh, you know, become traders for, uh, for hedge funds or as a managers. Uh, which is what my background is. So it's really good for them to hear more of a career um, path, you know, like how do you get there? Um, and that's something you just can't learn in school or on, you know, on the internet or really anywhere. You need to hear it from somebody who's actually been there. Your homework is to come up with a short idea. And second of all, you have to decide whether you're better off doing it through shorting stock or doing an option strategy, buying a put. And we could keep it simple, just buying a put and then picking out which one and the strike and why. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys get to speak to each other before coming here? Like as the winners of the scholarship? No, not really. No. We got to read each other's essay and that was so about, that's it. about it. Yeah. It's like, just, yeah, we got here and then we started kind of learning each other and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Didn't know anything about each other other than on the video. Yeah. yeah. Everybody here. It was like quite normal and then loud mouth, cuss mouth, yeah. So. <laughs> Hopefully I lived up to the hype. <laughs> It's
it's incredible. You know, I've never been in anything like this. I come from a really impoverished background, so not only is you know the opportunity great, it's just nice to be in a beautiful place and a beautiful home. It's an opportunity a lot of people don't get, you know, especially where I come from. So I don't, I don't get stressed out here. You know, <laughs> this is this is so different than than what we're used to. So it's nice. You try to soak it up. You hope it never ends. Everything, the people, the environment, being around people who are interested in stocks and want to talk about that, not Kim Kardashian. We're not in like some cube, you know, we're here. We're here relaxed. This what? is a, kind of an intense thing. And we study hard and you're in an environment where it's really relaxed and you can really let loose. And so you kind of need that. If you're going to dive hard, if you're going to work hard, you need to play hard. And so you can go and spend 12 hours a day researching stocks and then come and drink a beer in the pool. And you're not just staring at a little, you know, limelight white wall. You get to, to really take it in. Is it warm? So, I think the environment matches, you know, the intensity that we bring on both sides. I think just all the scholarship guys, you know, I think we all feel very fortunate to be here because like we did, we did, you know, show that we have merit to be here, but like ultimately like it was somebody seeing something within us and then gifting us and giving us a chance and like, that's really big. So, you know, I was in interview mode. I had all these questions ready, had the answers to it memorized and all that. And then when he hit me with that curveball out of nowhere, I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. You're saying I actually won this? And that's why my reaction seemed a little off because I still wasn't quite sure of what, what was happening at that time. Uh, it's good to be here just because I'm around people who have the same mission in life, which is to insource their financial wealth. And it's good to be able to pick the brains of people that are, you know, just starting their careers or maybe they're still in college, like Trey, versus people who've been in the industry like for a while, like Raj and Ben. And it's always good to be able to look at both sides of things to see, you know, what kind of path everyone's going along and what kind of challenges and obstacles you'll have to overcome. And it's good to be able to take that knowledge in, especially from the more experienced guys. Oh man, definitely. I'm loving every second of it. Every single second of it. I'm just trying to take it all in. We've been put here strategically in an environment of, of similarities, and so I think it would be foolish to not maintain those connections. It, it does. It gives you a taste of if you work hard, you know. You know, labor equals leisure. The harder you work, the more leisure you have. So. There's no sense in going back home and expecting this stuff to drop on your doorstep. So it's nice to see it and get a taste for it. And then when you go back home and you don't have it, you're like, okay, what's the step to get there? <laughs> How hard do I need to work? How smart do I need to work? I'm very proud of the progress, actually. Some guys have really come a long way in a short amount of time. Curtis, for example, look at him. Look, that's all the money Curtis just made trading. <laughs> yeah. So look at all these dollars. See this thing? Yeah. Nice. This thing must be expensive. Yeah, yeah. You guys are sitting in one of the rooms where the money is absolutely thickest on the ceiling. If you guys, if you guys were short the dollar, then like you should. They'll look. Cheers. 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 I know Ben is. School. You know, in the casino, the roulette, but by far the greatest thing they did was they had they added like the screen of like the the past twenty numbers. So then people were like, "Oh, eight reds, it has to be black now." There you go, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank. This is the big New York strip. Big New York. Big Curtis. Uh, this is what I want. It's past the meter. I know. Happy birthday. Protein cake. Yeah, it's kind of just cake. I Every single dollar is donated by the customers. In the original McGuire's, Miss Molly McGuire came here from Ireland. Very poor. They scraped together money to open their own restaurant. So they started writing their names and their squadron numbers and putting the dollars up on the wall. And now both restaurants have close to $2 million in them. 
Ah! <laughs> you do it for me. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You, you, you can reach easily. What do you want? Yeah, anywhere. Okay. Feels great. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome to be a part of a tradition too. You know, like there's it seems like there's been 1.75 million people who have essentially done it. So it's nice to, to be able to be a part of it. I'm on the wall. Hi, Anton. Hi, Raj. This is to prevent inflation, reducing the money supply. Money supply reduced. One dollar out of circulation. This is how you prevent inflation. That's you, right. you reduce the money supply. That's so, how we we're, did so we're making America great again. <laughs> Thank you. Having someone who's been doing it for a while tell you some of the stuff that can take you years to find out. Uh, it's it's really powerful and valuable i i feel like so so yeah so lots of good insights from ben definitely there's tuna out there yeah okay. yeah and i've seen i've seen plenty caught <laughs> heading to the marina to jump on a boat and go out and hook a bunch of fish I think Tala has the best sweater of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> nice day out, of, yeah, out in the sea. Uh, be one, one with nature.
catch, good fish, you know. Uh, so yeah, we have enough to feed uh, all, uh, the whole group right now. Not to fight me for it. I'll have to fight a, a flock of pelicans. These are fresh as you're gonna get. Well, they're actually gonna clean the fish that we've caught. So we don't have to do that. And then we're gonna actually take them to the restaurant and have them cook them up for us so we can have some dinner here this evening. Should be quite enjoyable. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> so yeah, so it was actually nice because uh, even being outside of uh, internet range, you know, you just end up talking about other stuff for like six hours. So uh, it gives you a different perspective. Curtis, Curtis is responsible for like a month's dinner. <laughs> no, a lot of these were these are an old mine. Pull them up two at a time, man. That, that did was that, the best. Did he did yeah. that three times, I did it twice. I, I know. It twice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they are uh, what we call nugget hunters, trying to pick up ideas for, for free. It's a little jar here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, great time. Yeah, I got to bring my uncle to this. This is good stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> the red snapper. Drastic change. One day it's a classroom. Next day it's a team day. It's just been very nice to be able to do that. Talk to everybody and uh, learn what everybody, how everybody's perceiving different processes and get our thoughts for our ideas. I had a lot of mentoring calls with my Thailand mentees. So I did them all pretty much in the one day so I could do them all and focus on these guys the rest of the trip. I heard the guys had a great time talking with Ben today. In, in between Ben catching tons and tons of fish. I was shocked. I was like, you know, Edwin here caught about 15 fish. Uh, Curtis caught the biggest fish in the boat. I'm very proud of these guys. You eat what you kill, just like the markets. I was, I was like 23 years old. Joe's our mechanic, he was like 70. He was, his real job was to fix lawnmowers. And then he would be our main like flight mechanic and he would fix the planes with duct tape. And I would be like, Joe, are you serious? You're fixing my plane with duct tape. You know I fly that through thunderstorms in the Caribbean, right? And his, this is classic, I don't forget this. He's like, it's not going to the moon. <laughs> I ended up moving to, going to London and, and going a hedge fund route. Like all the interviews I had with the trading jobs, extremely rarely would I be asked an actual trading question. Very rarely. It was more just how you are overall as a person. They don't want to work with somebody that they don't like or somebody they don't have a good, comfortable, you know, uh, rapport with. Like I, gotta, I get asked things like, you know, three things was the most important. You know, like uh, market knowledge, uh, honesty, intelligence. Honesty. Right, honesty. It is all the fried with the corn and the hush puppy. This is the blackened with the special uh, house sauce over here. Blackened with the bourbon sauce. And this is the grilled. Yeah. Delicious. I mean, it's fresh. It doesn't get any fresher than this. It's kind of cool knowing that these guys caught it. And we're now eating it. I caught, I caught the corn though. Remember when you guys were asking? It was like that corn we're gonna catch like, first. Yeah. Is this the most fish you saw someone ever catch? It is the most fish I've ever seen someone catch, especially on one of these deals. And first time anybody ever invited me in for some as well. To be honest with you, pretty awesome guys. Thank you. Tomorrow fish tacos. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? That's actually real. Can't get much better. You know, nice sunshine days and, you know, great places to eat, great activities, a little relaxation, a little getting along with each other, getting to know everybody. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, I've been checking in periodically. They're supposed to come up with a short idea here. And uh, I am looking forward because short ideas are actually the toughest thing for all retail traders. 
to come up with. So I'm looking forward to see their process. Maybe if we dive into the pool and go down to the bottom, we'll find a short down there. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Oh, absolutely. We're in the same area, so we're definitely going to get together. I'll meet him with uh, my wife. He can bring his girlfriend. We'll go out to dinner or something like that. We definitely look forward to uh, working together, generating trade ideas and um, helping each other out in, in other areas, too. Uh, I, I resonate with him, and I think he resonates with me. So pretty grateful that the Institute was able to, you know, allow our paths to cross. When you're a, a, an individual investor and like it can be such a lonely experience, like you're basically on your own computer at, at home in your apartment or at your house, I don't think it's beneficial for someone to be selfish and just, uh, if they think they have a good idea, just keep it to themselves. Uh, it's actually better to share your ideas with others because it turns into a feedback loop of, 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 of learning everyone brings something new or something different to the table. And when you merge all of that together, it creates an environment where everyone learns at an accelerated level, as opposed to just doing it on your own and just trying to figure out the best way to, to have good returns on your own. I think you definitely miss out on, you know, just someone else's perspective that could actually help further that idea and the development of that idea becoming a trade. It's uh, going pretty good so far. We have potential ideas that we could present and we're just trying to nail down some of the specifics, see if we can find the data and the qualitative information to back us up. You know, you don't have to go anywhere to do research and like everyone's under the same under the same roof so it's just easier to get in touch with other, and with everyone and that sort of thing. It's obviously very hard to find a good short idea with a, a good strong bull market but um, we've learned that fact and we've learned you know um, the importance of qualitative research within that because some of these things look good on the surface but when you start to dive down you know so it teaches you really to, uh, to pay attention to the finer details. Uh, how about we uh, go ahead outside, maybe and like enjoy the sun a little bit and kind of getting, you know, clogged down with all these numbers. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Nice. Woo. Feels good even in the shade. Yeah. What's the water feel like? Uh, ah, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Is this how you guys are imagining 20, 30 years from now? Or? Oh yeah, I'm sitting right up there sitting right <laughs> with there, a couple yeah. of uh, champagne glasses and uh, computer and hammering out nice ideas. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's a bit surreal. Obviously it's the opportunity of a lifetime and being, being able to spend time with, with, uh, with people that have a common goal sort of thing and being able to uh, work out problems and effectively uh, try to create good trade ideas and try to make money. Having talked to Raj, Anton, and Ben, these guys are incredibly successful, clearly. They're very generous, very humble human beings. And for them to tell you that, hey, I think you have talent, I think you can make it far, that, that says a lot right there. It gives me a lot of confidence for the future. Not just in you know this, this part of my life, but all the areas of my life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is what we live for, boys. Yeah. This is what we live for. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to be outright short a name in a sector that's growing. Because, say, this whole sector goes up by 25% next year. On an outright basis, it could be the worst company in the sector but it could still be go higher. You know, we looked at the, the earnings, but what about the revenues? Like the revenues, like that's, because like I said, remember like um, a lot of in, companies infant stage, they, they trade on revenues and they trade on user growth. Not necessarily. It's like like uh, Facebook for a while, would, it, it traded on clicks on how many users or, you know. That's why even like Twitter and all, all these other, Snapchat, about to, Snapchat's about to, 
IPO, and it's going to all trading on users. As soon as this thing though stops growing, this thing probably gets halved. If sure. if they come a quarter, it, or I should say, like their revenues in the next quarter right. didn't were the same as they were the year before, this probably gets stock probably gets cut in half. So again, I think the the takeaway would be that um, this could be a short, but it's probably paired against something else, and probably it's trading on metrics that you need to to fall and and the metrics are not earnings earnings it's kind of irrelevant here yeah i mean i think it may you know it makes sense it's i guess it is a bit of a defensive play right so it's something to keep in mind yeah Yeah. right i think that you've identified a catalyst there that's that's not going to turn that i mean obviously like anything there's some risks and you identify them but like you said there's no takeover it's probably not a ton of up of upside if you're wrong, if you're wrong, yeah, right. it's probably not. Yeah, good analysis. They they bid, they did both the quantitative and the qualitative analysis, and uh, it's definitely a, a candidate, short candidate. Now I'm really looking forward to this one, the young the young guns. What do we got here? It's the company that I actually work for. <laughs> is that is that lower than? Uh, yeah, most in industry is like 1.2. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah. Okay. So what is your view on the sector itself? Are you... Not outright bearish, but it's just kind of like neither neither not here bullish. neither here nor there. Not so. bullish, but not... Yeah. So you're neutral pretty yeah, much on the sector. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. You're essentially long crude. Okay. Yeah. Not okay. like not like outright. No, right, not outright, but but that's part of... Yeah, yeah. A, that's part of what you're rooting. I mean, you, you know what you're rooting for somewhat. Yeah. You have something to root for <laughs> in terms of in that market, okay. Give or take, all their uh, capital expenditures is equivalent to what they're buying back in stock, in common stock. So they, like, can't, they can't get financing for... No, like, I mean, they want, they're, 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 active, they, they're actively seeking to get financing, but they can't, they just, just simply can't secure it. That's interesting, actually. You really did, well, you really did the qualitative research even, even better, so. Good work. And Sorry, it's definitely no. a candidate. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'll get it. Yeah. And, 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 and you had the added bonus of just telling some guy in their face, I'm going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> Which like take? Profit yeah. <laughs> All right. Now that I have a process that I can follow step by step and just go from there, I, I'm pretty sure I'll stand a, a much better chance of coming up with good ideas before I actually go and uh, put the trades on in the market. Now onto the pain trade. You know, it's it, that's that's kind of the key about it. Is when it's not it's not necessarily uh, a, a sector or a niche uh, trade that that it's about. It's about something that is more widely followed, uh, something that a lot of people are in, that they've been in for a while, and uh, for some reason something happens, some catalyst, and turns around. And that is when you start feeling pain, emotional pain from uh, from the market. Uh, and that's the, you know the classic thing is that's when you start second guessing your reason why you're in the trade in the first place. And you get these <coughs> exaggerated moves. I'm gonna put some up here, and then I'm gonna show you some charts so we can talk to the talk about them in more detail. Right. So you end up up here. And that's when you like basically mortgage your house to just day trade over leverage tech names that has no value at all. And then of course eventually the whole thing just starts tanking. And now you're sitting here super leveraged and you have no idea how to get out of this trade because you didn't know why you got into it in the first place. Because it's not that hard to be over, over leveraged in these names. Uh, yeah, I mean you can position yourself for it. You know, there's not there's not just one way to trade and make money it's not going to be too obvious because if it's obvious and it's going to be obvious to everybody but if you can derive to a conclusion that something is likely to cause a pain trade for a lot of other people yeah i mean you can you can take advantage of it um these things can last for a while so if you so if you are going to do that you need to have a way to control your risk too but when you get when you get these when people get really greedy or really scared that's when you get these over-exaggerated swings, which leads to these emotional situations for everybody who's in it, and that can basically drive prices way beyond what you would think would be possible 
all of a sudden all your risk brown calculations is a complete lot of whack because you, you get to become like completely irrational so if everybody is long something you know like your grandmother starts telling you about it and everything you know all of a sudden something happens and it starts going the other way well now everybody's running to sell well somebody has to buy it from you all right and now but now since everybody everybody bought it there's nobody left to buy it and then you get these like huge moves that goes way beyond anything that you would expect mm -hmm. they need to be aware of their exposure in the marketplace <laughs> so uh, they don't get caught on the wrong side of a big erratic move that's kind of the goal so I think we all I think they got it I think you're on the same page <laughs> Hopefully, there's, hopefully no one's in too much pain right now. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. the market's the one who will be in pain when you're done with it. Yeah, homework tomorrow night. We have a special guest who's going to be here um, tomorrow, but you guys will basically have some time with him, either late tomorrow or Friday morning. And he's going to teach part of this. He's going to do a little presentation in his session in, in the, uh, on Friday for class. Each, this, I was going to go, each one of you has to present either a long or a short idea, whether it's through stock, through options. Each one of you will present for a half an hour by yourself. No, you won't have anyone else, it'll just be you. And myself, Ben, and our secret guests will be the investment panel. This would be kind of like, this would mimic what would, it would be like if you were working at an investment bank or, or a uh, hedge fund when you're pitching a trade idea. So yeah, we're coming to the end of the week now. We do a lot of work, it's a, you know, class work is a basically a full day for us. So uh, we need to give some time to uh, to relax as well and realize that trading should also be fun it's not just work continuously because then you go crazy yes yeah, so i'm still a professional trader uh, i realized that there's a huge hunger out there for you know just regular people to learn how to do this stuff and invest their own money but there's just a complete overload of information and most of it is just completely useless and garbage so it was a real eye-opener to me to start talking to small investors that really really wanted to you know manage their own money uh being their iras or their, their family money but they didn't feel comfortable doing it themselves without any further guidance or education i mean they're all smart guys you know from the get-go but they it didn't take them long to realize the value and the benefit that they get from being here and talking about the stuff that we talk about from our experiences uh, and they're doing really well you know they're picking this stuff up and they're realizing uh, that things aren't always the way it seems in the media and uh, in universities thank you oh, um, <laughs> We are headed to the Destin airboat adventure. We will be taking an airboat through the swamps and, be, and looking for gators and come up with trade ideas. Their cold-blooded reptiles grow by the amounts of protein in their diet. Now, in a gator farm, he would be as big as the one in that pen. Oh, there's the big one. Oh, wow. Good. Well, I've never held a gator before, so it's something new. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, he's, got, he's got actually three eyelids. If you watch it, he's going to let one go forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's their swimming goggle. Oh, okay. See. And so I that's that why either. it looks like that. It's Tim Tebow <laughs> grabbing fear by the neck. Seven liters? What? You doing there? He's got to drop the thing. He's got to drop the boat. Gator country. Real one. Two, two, two. Not no little. Yeah. <laughs> Three, wow. Not no four. Footers. My very first day sober.
12 o'clock yeah, yeah. with the boat. She's uh, eight and a half foot. No way to tell how old she is. It's exactly where she was yesterday. <laughs> but you don't have to worry now. Yeah, right. Yeah. I am David Perlin. I am a senior advisor at Goldman Sachs in Washington, D.C. I've spent 30 years in the financial services industry, sales and trading roles, hedge fund, etc. Uh, I had the good fortune of being a colleague and friend to Anton Creel. Uh, at the time, I was running the international sales and trading effort in New York for Goldman Sachs. Um, and needless to say, European stocks were a significant part of our business. Uh, Anton was a young trader that we hired. Uh, and quickly uh, became readily apparent uh, that he was someone we needed to pay attention to. Uh, took over a formidable book, um, traded exceedingly well, uh, very complex and risk intensive jobs, um, and became a true mate of mine. So it's a pleasure to be involved again with his efforts. Anton drives the product and the service. Um, it's a passion, he's lived it in a true risk sense and there's no replacing that so I think his ability to bring people of like experience together um, from various firms and deliver that kind of institutional risk management perspective to to the retail trader is invaluable um, we gathered for lunch in New York uh, one of his recent trips and talked about doing something together on the mentoring side um, Quite frankly, a significant, a significant part of my career and one of the reasons I was successful at Goldman Sachs was owed to a, a good mentor. Um, I have fewer opportunities to do that now um, and I thought it would be both rewarding and, inter and interesting to, uh, to see what, I can, what kind of expertise I can lend to, the, to this group. Some perspective and guidance on the industry and how to break into it, what matters to people, um, how do people evaluate future hires. What kind of things can they do and build upon that makes them interesting candidates for investment banks, hedge funds, etc. So um, really again trying to be as practical as possible uh, and really bring an element of reality to what could be just a classroom type of experience. Uh, very much looking forward to seeing everybody and meeting them. Um, I'm sure we'll find some some great things to talk about and um, some really interesting ideas to discuss in, on the investment side. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So welcome to class number four. This is our final class session. Uh, we are very lucky to have a Wall Street veteran here today, our friend David Perlin. He's worked on the, in the industry for over 30 years. He's worked at some fine institutions like Goldman Sachs, he started his own hedge fund. He's here also to give you guys some advice in terms of uh, share his experiences, some of his insight, and uh, some advice for people that are trying to break into the industry. 
So with, with, further, with no further ado, here's my friend David Perlin. So I, I am here as a friend of Anton, um, and uh, Ben and I were talking yesterday about, you know, it, invariably when you meet Wall Street people, it's like, you know, who do you, who do you know? And we know, you know, hundreds of people. So, and we, we probably were out together at some point in, 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 uh, in Ben's Templeton days. Um, I ran international at Goldman. Um, and Anton was a young trader in London and was really good with risk. It was clear. He was, he was a very talented and very uh, dynamic guy. Um, so we got to trading fairly, fairly quickly. Um, and he moved up the ranks quickly. And one of the one of the most beautiful things about this industry is, if you're good, you, you know, typically you're not held back. Um, and I've kind of been watching the the launch and growth of of the institute. Um, so we talked about a way that I can, you know, get involved. So I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. So I, I was fortunate to to get into the industry right out of college and. I think it's really important just to get started. So instead of thinking about the perfect job or the perfect firm, I think it's really important to just get started. You know, I started as, you know, trade support and ended up running a trading desk. I mean, it's it's a long path and you'll end up doing different things, but just get started. Get it, get your foot in the door. My best hires were, you know, wait, this guy's doing a great job in settlements. Let's let's give him a shot, and display the passion that you're, that kind of motivated you to be here in the first place. I mean, you guys are investing in, in this skill set. By being here, you know, I could I could go to any school in America or Canada and interview people. I can't teach that passion, so you're already displaying something that's gonna that's gonna help you stand out in this, in this, uh, in this career. Is that okay? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Do I want to be part of that team? So that's really how you evaluate it. Is it going to be intellectually challenging? Is it going to be stimulating? Is it going to be fair? Am I going to grow? Am I going to learn? Am I going to make money? Maybe not in that order. I had at peak about 150 people in the United States, 15 direct reports to me, but indirect all those people reported to me. And it was at peak a $200 million revenue business per annum. And that's commissions, um, allocated profits from uh, equity capital markets transactions, so all, all new issues, all secondaries, block trades, et cetera. That portion attributed to, to my business was $200 million at peak. And very good margins, mm -hmm. really good margins. You know, far more interesting for me if I saw your CV to talk about your results. Show me your portfolio. I, and I think, you know, I, I get back to that point of, of showing passion and interest in something beyond just, you know, what my educational background is or, the, you know, these are the jobs I've had. But to show performance results in a portfolio is, is really telling to people. And, and thematic creep, especially in a hedge fund, is death absolute death. And that's the way you should trade your stocks. Have a certain repeat thesis. Have a swing. Find your swing. Find your sweet spot. Something that could be repeatable. Absolutely. Um, so guys, as I said, it's a delight to be here. Um, I'm here to be helpful. Um, I have more stories than I have time. So, you know, feel free to ask me some more questions as the day goes on. Um, specific war stories are are always fun and, and kind of illuminate some things that there might be some takeaways for your own portfolio and your own career. Um, and, you know, I just like to be a resource as you, as you consider what you can use this course to do and how you want to, you know, start building your career and your wealth. We're all happy? Yeah, excellent questions. Um, very, you know, very appropriate and, uh, and nuanced also. Interesting guys. And everybody's got their own kind of perspectives. But you know, to a man, they're thoughtful, really thoughtful. It's great to be here. I really wanted to be long Amazon, so I sold puts. What's my problem? 
But made a little bit of money instead of a lot. Yeah, that's what we were looking at. Dave, he's where you want to be, and so his track record, is, you know, he has perspective on small funds, large funds, um, and an array of, of, of different asset classes. So he has a large pool of a wealth of knowledge to draw from. Um, and so, you know, when he speaks, you want to listen because he's been there and done that. And that's why we're here, to learn from guys who have done it. And he's definitely one of them. That was the strike price. Mm -hmm. And that was the price. You guys all remember this, right? Mm -hmm. yep. We were looking at how Amazon options were going to trade before earnings. And now we're going to look at how they trade post earnings and how to use them going forward. You're going to present to uh, Ben, myself, and David. Just want to simulate kind of how it would be if you're... I had a fun pitching an idea and or on a phone call like you're by yourself. So I'm just going to begin by outright stating what my position and view is, mm -hmm. dig into a little bit about the company and the sector, get into some of the, qual the quantitative information and then discuss the qualitative factors behind those quantitative numbers and then I'll summarize everything at the end. Okay. Their net sales in the U.S. and Canada are down to 18.6%. They, in the time of downtrend, have increased their capacity in the flax sand area, which was only 3% of their business up till now. Closing price of 28.47, no dividend, no dividend yield, and a total debt to equity of 111.13. Almost 100% of their warehousing is within 150 miles of manufacturing infrastructure that's attributable, attributable to U.S. GDP. Uh, they're also attempting to continue to grow their main markets in the U.S. and Canada, but uh, the biggest upside, in my view, would be just uh, expanding their, their in, within their new markets that they're trying to enter into. They were in this business, but they weren't in the retail side of it. Exactly. And I think that that's where they got hung up. And they're getting tarnished by that. And they have. So that's an opportunity for them. And I, I think that that's you know, an opportunity that the market doesn't see, that they're, yeah. that they're generalizing it too much. And I like the revenue growth. They've remained profitable. Like what, what is the headline you want to see? What do you want to see from... The man grows to the point where one of their idle plants is then reactivated. So that's what I would like to see, where like building permits go up. Mm -hmm. They're in position to take advantage of an increase of demand. I like how they make money like seven ways off of you. Yeah. I think that's too. a really interesting business. And that's the way I took the concept of yeah. the fly. You know, these are real companies. They're not just like tickers and like numbers. Yeah. You know, these, these big investment banks, they have rooms of analysts at their disposal and, and sell side, you know, research. And they have like so many resources well we don't you know we just have ourselves and the internet kind of thing so you want to try to get into something you had a little understanding for as far as the product good i think it's good all right cool it's definitely a candidate that should go on the watch list we'll see how earnings come out on uh, monday and then we'll reassess the idea from there okay cool good. well done thank you well, I think you know his process was good, and the way he deducted his analysis, uh, looking kind of uh, you know top down, was was excellent. It, there aren't that many competitors, and certainly, America First manufacturing re reboot, if you will, all that plays into this story. So I think you have some. I think you have some tailwinds to this. Definitely uh, consider putting this on. Clearly, I mean, I think that's yeah. I like it. Yeah, good job. Good work. Really good work. You know, cumulative shares over for a long months time, or years even. Jenison owns it. They're a good growth investor. So, I, you know, I think you're onto something. Yeah, I think it could be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, and and you could win on both sides of that trade. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not it's a perfect world. It's a perfect world. <clears throat> it's hard to get good pure pairs trades, but this one might be a candidate. As Ben, as ben says before, it's it's hard to find pure. Paris trades, but if you get one side of it right, it's okay too. All right, exactly. Like I said, I think this is the biggest uh, takeaway from this experience is the feedback from qualified individuals that are not just, you know, 
talking just for conversation's sake. They're actually giving you professional feedback. And of course that, that benefits, you know, all the decision making process and what to look out for and things like that. That is why we're all here. <laughs> is to find these good ideas and start trading. <laughs> All right, well, guys, thank you for uh, all of your trade ideas today. They were great. I think we all have pretty good trade ideas that we can put on our watch list and uh, start thinking about our putting our ideas into action going forward. Yeah, I think they did a, you know, as a group, they did a great job. It's like very thorough research. It's kind of the typical stuff you'll see at a, at a big fund. Uh, you know, this is the type of uh, investigation that analysts do. I mean, it's really, that's that's what they do, right? And I think, uh, you know, one thing is to, you come up with an idea and basically then you want to try to tear it down. You know, say, well, why can this potentially not be good? Idea? <coughs> so, uh, but yeah, they did, you know, they all did a great job. That's a good process. In summary, guys, that you did guys did great in the classroom. The only required work you have for the rest of the day is to um, come to the pool, have a couple of drinks and eat a lot of food at dinner. And other than that, <laughs> you're off the hook. And I look forward to profiting off of all your trade ideas. <laughs>
we've had such different lives. And uh, one of the things that I, great things that I'm walking away with um, is that I'm going to make a list of my fears, probably a list of my top five fears, and really make it a point to attack them um, and confront them. Because he's a pretty courageous dude. He does some crazy stuff. And, but I, it's not reckless, though. Um, and there's a difference there. I would definitely recommend this to someone who is willing to uh, put the effort and time to learn how to do this properly. And they won't understand this until, until, until they actually pull the trigger and actually come here and experience all of this. When they are sitting here right now, and in hindsight, they take it all in and understand what this uh, environment can provide you in terms of learning. That, that's a life changer. It's a game changer for real. I guarantee it. <laughs> and this is, I'm talking from the heart. I've enjoyed myself fantastically. I mean, I've tried to figure out so many different intelligent ways to describe this experience, but when I say it's amazing, it's amazing. It's an, an invaluable experience. There is no dollar amount on the, the cultivation that the, the Institute provides. It's real. And um, what we've done here is, is great. And the relationships that are built here is amazing. The knowledge that I've got. I, I do want to 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 say thank you, Anton, for for bringing all of us scholars here. And I appreciate you know you seeing something within us. I hope that it continues. I hope that there's you know millions of guys out there who are able to get the opportunity that I got here this week. I have nothing but appreciation for the experience that I've had from from hanging out with these guys has been phenomenal. And it's all thanks to you. I, I never would have thought that this would have happened. So I thank you very much. This was a lifetime opportunity for me. I know just, just from watching you on the 10 Secrets of Financial Success video, I knew that you knew what you were talking about and you are very interested in actually helping people who want to put in the effort. So I thank you and I thank you the, and thank the Institute for everything you guys have done. I really appreciate it. Well, I have to say guys, that was a, a very full and uh, interesting day and I, I have to applaud you all for for bringing your effort and focus. You only get out of these things what you put into it, and you guys worked hard today. Um, and some really good ideas, really solid thoughts. And uh, hopefully you got interesting feedback and, and some food for thought. It's my inaugural institute weekend, it's fantastic. Um, thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to more. And uh, thanks for a great day, for all the effort today. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a great uh, week. Um, here with you guys, I think it's been awesome. You know, it's really interesting to see the enthusiasm and the knowledge as you guys have. And honestly, I think you're way ahead of where I was when I started this business. You know, to succeed in this business is it's not easy. Uh, it requires a lot of hard work. And um, but at the end of the day, I think you really need the passion. Um, an ambition to succeed because it's not really about necessarily the smartest guy in the room that make it. It's the one that's most drive and the most passion. Uh, yeah, I think you guys do well. Just just find that you know find that drive and you'll make it definitely. Uh, part of the reason I do this is because I really want to help people get to the next level, and I like to see that when people take an interest in this, I want to see them take as much of an interest and. In, love this as much as I do. And I can honestly say this for a fact, I'm really happy, for, I mean, I've seen from every single one of you a progression and a, and a, uh, a path where you guys are actually taking what we have taught you and willing to take this to the next level. I was a lot like you, it doesn't matter how old you are or what you've come from. One great thing about the markets are doesn't matter where you went to school. It doesn't matter the diploma on, on your, the wall. It's all about, it's the one thing in life you, where you have 100% control. Any other business, any other thing you have, there's other factors, but here you control 100% of the destiny of where you get to. And to see you guys really work and progress and hopefully not only just learn from what I, and Ben and David have taught you, but also from each other, because I'm constantly learning every single day from other people, and I'm learning from my my students as well. I'm glad not only do you get to meet me and Ben and David, but also each other. And I hope that you all stay in touch and 
learn from each other and help each other because that's the way that you will get ahead. Cheers again. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. Cheers. Cheers.